Welcome back everyone to this very special Pi Day update on my Reefberry Pi DIY Aquarium Controller. I got a few things I want to show you tonight, so stay tuned. So for the last couple of months, I've been hard at work on the software and the hardware itself wasn't much more than a big pile of wires on the desk. Um, it's time to clean that up. I want to start working on some new features and I really couldn't proceed until I started to put stuff together in a more permanent uh, way. So what we're looking at here, just give you a quick peek of my energy bar eight. Uh, and this is basically, um, well, these are the outlets that are going to be controlled from the Raspberry Pi and from the Reefberry Pi software. So just give you a real quick uh, view of this. I think it's pretty cool that I found this clear plastic enclosure to put it in so you can kind of see all the parts in there. Uh, but real quick, it's got power coming in. This is the main voltage, 120 volts here in the US. Uh, that's running through 15 amp fuse. I've got an indicator light here, which will light up when this thing is getting power, 120 volt power. Uh, then the uh, mains, I've got a 5-volt power supply, that black box right there you can see connected to it. Um, that's just, you know, nothing special. It's one of those accessory chargers, you know, USB, uh, cell phone type charger. Um, and that's, you know, taking 120 volts, converting it down to 5 volts DC, uh, which is being fed over to the relays. This is the 8-channel relay. Uh, so the 5 volts is powering or providing the power for the relays to turn on and off. Uh, each of these relays is connected to you know, one of these outlets. Uh, so each one could be individually controlled. 8 outlets, 8 relays. Uh, and then I got a, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's a 9 pin serial port type connector, uh, which will connect over to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, eight of these pins are used, you know, for the eight GPIO pins to connect or control each relay. And there's uh, the ninth pin is being used for the 3.3 volts uh, that this side of the relay needs to operate. So that's uh, it right now. I'll do a quick demonstration of it in action. I just wanted to show this. I think it's uh, turned out really nice. That's working out pretty good. So that's that. Uh, and then quickly, there's a big mess right here, uh, but I need to get the rest of my components into an enclosure. So I do have this nice project box here, but I think I've got too many things to go into one box. Um, so I'm going to need to make some decisions on how this is all going to be laid out. But obviously my Raspberry Pi, this is the brains of the operation is going to be in there. Uh, this is the nine pin connector, which will go to the energy bar. This needs to be mounted in there somewhere. Um, I've got this little RJ11 breakout board. Uh, so this has four ports on it. These could be used for temperature sensors. I think four is plenty. So this is, needs to go in here somehow. Um, then I've got my uh, analog to digital converter. This is what will allow me to hook up my pH probes, my salinity probes, that sort of thing. Uh, it's just something I wired up. I've only got two channels wired up on this. This thing supports eight. So I'm going to have to put together another board because um, I, I, I would like to have access to all eight channels you know, for future expansion. So this board will be bigger. I'm going to wire up another one. But obviously this needs to go somewhere. You can see it's starting to get crowded in here. I'm probably going to put this into its own enclosure and you know connect these two somehow. Uh, and then this uh, connects to you know something like this. This is the pH uh, board, and that needs to go through uh, an analog isolation circuit, which I've got right there. So you know if I'm going to have eight of you know, something like this, yeah, all this is going to be in its own. Uh, enclosure. 
Uh, that means it's going to need its own power. So this is a little step-down transformer. Uh, it'll take 12 volts, and I'm bringing it down to 5 volts. That'll be powering that stuff. Um, we'll be integrating in uh, this chip here. I forget what the PCA9685. Uh, this is a pulse width modulation circuit. I believe this has 16 channels, so I'll be able to uh, connect to all sorts of devices with this, like pumps, lighting, that sort of thing. So that's going in here. Um, and then, you know, obviously, these things need to connect out to the, you know, whatever they're going to be controlling. And I think I'm going to be using RJ45. Uh, and then I could probably get a couple of channels in each one of these ports. Um, this is what the Apex uses. And I've got a couple of the wires to connect to, uh, you know, to Kessel lighting. So I'll probably use this standardized on this as my connector. But anyway, this will need to go in there. So this all needs to be laid out eventually. I want to get myself a 3D printer and probably just make my own custom enclosure. But for now, I'm going to be cutting some holes in this. It's got a nice clear lid. Um, get that all set up. So let's get this out of the way and take a look at how the energy bar works. Okay, I've got the energy bar connected to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so let me show you a couple of the features here. So as you can see, when it's connected to the main voltage, uh, that light lights up. Here's my fuse here. If this fuse were to blow, um, as you can see, I lose power, light goes out. I know there's no 120 volts coming in. So I think that was a cool little addition. I just put that on there. Um, then, I've, like I said, I got the 5 volts. I probably want to put another LED right here, see where this yellow... Uh, connectors are. I would like to see that I'm getting 5 volts power from my little power brick in there. Uh, that's something I'm probably going to add into this. <clears throat> uh, then the rest of this, this is connected, you know, over the DB9 uh, serial connector. And uh, yeah, so the rest of this is ready to go. Let me just bring up my little app here. All right, so... If I were just to check out all the outlets, uh, everything is off right now. But as you see, as I turn each one on, you'll see each you know, light light up over here. So let's just hit each one of these. And all of the outlets are controllable individually, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, to check that everything is wired up correctly, I have this little uh, circuit tester here. Uh, what you want to see is the two orange lights come on, no red light. And if I were to put this into each one of the outlets, um, you know, I do get the desired result. And I checked all the outlets. They're all wired up correctly. Uh, so, yeah, so as much is working. So I'm pretty happy with the way uh, this thing has turned out. And in the next focus, I need to get all of the other pieces uh, into another box. So that way everything's, you know, situated and nice and sturdy and it's not going to be falling apart on me. Um, and then once I get all of that done, uh, the next step, obviously, is to start adding some new features uh, into here. I got a few things planned that I want to get uh, integrated in, but I figured I'd better just, you know, Slow down a little bit. I need to get the hardware where it needs to be before I do anything more with the software. Um, so yeah, so that is pretty much the Pi Day update for today. Uh, things are working out pretty good uh, on this end. And I am happy with the results so far. So um, I guess that's about it for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video. And if you're interested in this project, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be you know, bringing out the updates as we go along. And love to have you guys along for the ride. Um, software still is not ready to be shared yet. I am going to share it. Uh, so just you know, sit back a little bit longer. Uh, once I get everything situated to where I think it needs to be, then I could write up some installation instructions and you know, get the wiring diagrams and everything 
um, prepared, but right now I don't have any of that. So if I were to give you the software, you wouldn't know how to install it or configure it, uh, most likely, and it would just it would just not be good right now. So um, I do want to wait until you know all that is shored up. So uh, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.